Hi everybody, my name is Christy and this is Be Encouraged. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Christy. Um, I am a mother of three. I'm almost 51 years old and um, the focus of um, the purpose of this uh, content is Bible and scripture based encouragement for women. Obviously, this is available to anybody that's interested, but my focus is to bring the Word of God in an approachable way to people that maybe have never studied the Bible or feel overwhelmed with beginning to read the Bible and to get to know um, our Savior Jesus Christ through His Word. And then also, if you've had a relationship with with God, and for whatever reason you're you're, you know, maybe got, you know, church church hurt, it happens, or you got discouraged, or um, just whatever your story is, and you're you're finding your way back to the feet of Jesus this is for you or if you are someone who's walked with God so long that you you know been with him forever but you also would like to have some encouraging content to share with someone that that might need um, this level of, of information so uh, my my goal is to be approachable to be honest to be real be transparent and um, to be showcase the love of Christ um, someone wants to ask me what my kind of life verse is or um, I forget exactly how they um, prefaced it but immediately my only thought is um, Christ and him crucified so my background um, I grew up in church in a very I guess what you would consider a fundamental type organization and at you know at as things go that the that approach sometimes it, it wears off after a while the the fear of of living in fear um, eventually it wears off and it just becomes you become sensory kind of overload on fear and uh, so it took me a, a long time to kind of delete all of that and come and and for many years I was completely stepped away from um, never really turned my back on God but definitely stepped away from living the, the a lifestyle that I, I knew I should live so in finding my way back um, what I had to do was what the scripture says um, you know, search this out with fear and trembling in my in my own way. So I had to reintroduce myself to the Word of God in a in an unbiased way, an objective way, and allow God to begin a healing process in me because there was a lot of wounds, there was a lot of hurt, a lot of anger, um, a lot of bitterness towards um, just. A lot of different situations that I won't go into but I had to learn who God is I had to redefine what a heavenly father is and so that's a story in and of itself so that is the focus I want to bring the the God and the Christ of this Bible forward and and let people know that that you know God is love yes he 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 is also I mean you you can't read the Bible without understanding that that God is also a God of judgment but he is love he literally cannot be anything other than what his word says so that that is my focus so yesterday um, I was having a ton of technical difficulties and I my subject was on rest so I ended up cutting it short to make sure that um, I got something recorded and hopefully today um, I'll also 
be successful. So we'll see. Um, I want to continue in talking about rest because it seems to be the theme of the world that we are living in right now. Just a pervasive exhaustion across the board. Everyone, no matter what your walk of life is, you know somebody that is exhausted and it may be you. Uh, physically exhausted, mentally exhausted, overloaded with social obligations, um, just too much information and and stuff flying at you every single day it leaves us depleted and what i feel like we are missing is god has designed a rest for his people his beloved he has promised rest for his people and we as christians we're living in the flesh and we're living in the world so all there's all of these like do this do this try this take this go here go there listen to this you know participate in this this is going to give you rest it's going to revitalize it's going to renew you all of these things but what we're overlooking is in from the beginning god designed a rest for his people in as much as he um he practiced it himself the God of the universe, the one that is all powerful, practiced a rest during creation. And it's not that God gets tired, He doesn't get weary, He has all power. But He knew that, you know, He would be making man in His image. And we are made in the image of God. But think of how it's hard enough. To go, okay, I have to become more Christ-like. My goal is to become closer to God. That in itself is such a, a far reach for our human minds. What if God had not had put in a day of rest? If he hadn't have fleshed that out and said, you know, hey, this is a rest day and it's holy. Keep it. Make sure you keep a rest day. Um we would really have a hard time associating with a God that we already know he never sleeps or slumbers according to the scripture, but we must sleep. So by him showing us, hey, here's a rest, and I'm not just saying it's good, I'm saying it's holy. So let's talk about that. And yesterday, just to recap very quickly, um, I got into uh, three areas that... Um, where rest is located. Number one was in the presence of God. And you're welcome to go back and listen to that um, session. Number two, um, rest is found in stillness. And then uh, number three, um, rest is found in the Word of God. So, moving on from that, so what I would like to start with now is um, rest is found in God's plan. And it is up to us to find out what God's plan and purpose is in our life. You cannot sit around and wait for someone to come and go, Hey, I just want to let you know that God's purpose and plan for your life is ABC. Um, even if it did happen, God needs you need to have a conversation with God. God needs to tell you this. He needs to confirm it. Even if someone comes behind and says, "I have a word for you," I'm conf you know, and it, then the word is confirmed in more than one source. So it is up to us to get to know the voice of God, to get to know the heart of God, and to understand what His purpose in our life is. And we all have the same basic purpose in life whenever we become yoked together with Christ. We, we all have the same purpose. The, same, the only purpose that, that, that Jesus was saying over and over and over as He taught in His three and a half years of ministry, He said over and over and over, follow me. Follow me, follow me. And his, you could see where his heart was. His heart was reaching. It was mm -hmm. the unwanted, the unloved, the fringe, the, you know, the outcast, the overlooked. So if we're going to follow him, then, then that is your purpose. Now, God may give you another layer on top of that, but that's your purpose. So um, finding the original plan or the purpose for your life is where rest is found. 
um, in Jeremiah 6 and 16, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and you'll find rest for your souls. So that sounds very like intangible, like, oh, oh, it's nothing I can put my hand on. So I encourage you to get in the Word of God. Pray, ask God, like, hey, can you show me areas in my life that I need to adjust in order to become aligned with your plan? Um, and if you're just really new to this and you need, you're like, but where is square one? Um, the quick answer would be uh, John 14 and 6 where he says Jesus answered I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me so in this uh, passage and I would encourage you if you're taking notes to go and read the chapter John 14 it, it's a quick read but it really um, showcases you know someone that's that really was had questions and um, so, so Jesus was talking. This was before, uh, before he was transfigured. He said he's telling his disciples. He's saying, "Hey, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may be where I am. You know the way." To the place where I'm going so he kind of leaves it hanging he says you know the way because he he has been showing them this whole time Jesus himself was baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost it's in the scripture so then Thomas says to him you know and Thomas has been with him all this time it makes you wonder how how he missed this he said but Thomas was living in the literal he, he was kind of like me and you I need like specifics he said Lord we don't know where you're going so how can we know the way and then Jesus answered to him and he said I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me if you really know me you will know my father as well from now on you do know him and have seen him so Jesus was trying to tell them like you believe in God the Father believe also in me and then it says I mean he was just he's literally telling uh, Thomas he says from now on you do know him and have seen him in other words he was going I am the father in flesh he was telling him but then then Philip he's over here scratching his head he goes well Lord show us the Father and that'll be enough for us and and Jesus just did he said you do know him and you've seen him and they're still just not getting it because they're human they they don't they have a human understanding just like you know and he said Jesus said don't you know me Philip even after I've been among you such a long time anyone who has seen me has seen the Father how can you say show us the Father don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me so what he's saying is he's saying we are one in the same uh, the words I say to you I do not speak on my own authority he's like I'm not speaking as Jesus I'm speaking as the Father rather it is the Father living in me who's doing his work so long before when Jesus was 12 years old and his mother was when he got lost in the temple she he goes don't you know it must be about my father's business so so young 12 year old Jesus already had an understanding of what his role in life was um, he says believe me when I say that I am in the father and the father is in me or at least the very least believe the evidence of the works of themselves and then he goes on to give them full um, blank check this is God's plan Verily, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. They will even do greater things than these. So, um, it, and then he says, because I'm going to the Father. He said, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. So, if you are looking for the original plan, the original path to me, John 14, that's 
a good place to start. So you know that Jesus is the way. You know he is the truth. You know he is the life. He is the Father in flesh. So there it is. And he's telling us, okay, this is this is what I want you to do. So, um, and by walking in it, back to Jeremiah 6 and 16, it says, where the good way is and walk in it and you'll find rest for your soul. So your soul is going to stop that struggle of where do I fit? What is my plan? That that big, huge question mark that hangs over your mind at night. What is my purpose? I feel adrift. This is your purpose and this is your plan. Um, another place that I feel like that is incredibly important in finding rest and that is in repentance and repentance is not a one-time thing it is an ongoing attitude towards God understanding that we are human we are flesh and that we are um, on a journey becoming closer to him so it's not like, oh, well, I did such and such yesterday, so I've got to repent. It's more like getting up every day and going, Lord, I thank you for all of your blessings in my life. And then as you share your gratitude and your thanksgiving to God, then you move into a, oh, and while I'm here, wash me clean. Get me ready for my day. Help me to showcase you wash away any of the the dust on the windows of my heart that way your light can shine through with no obstructions to me that's what repentance is it's not repentance is not a stick that god beats you with before he sends you to hell because you just can't possibly be good enough repentance is that spiritual windex that just clears away the dust and the grime and the distractions of everyday life and allows his light to shine through. To back that up, Isaiah 30 and 15, and this is paraphrased, and again God said, because apparently he said this before, he goes, in repentance and rest you'll be saved. Quietness and trust is your strength. The next um, way we can find rest for our soul is to follow God. And we just talked about that in a, in a sense whenever we were talking about the plan of God and walking, finding that ancient path, the good way and walking in it. So following God. Uh, so there's a, a scripture in Isaiah 63 and 14. <clears throat> excuse me. It says, As the cattle go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So you lead your people. After we traverse the rough and ragged edges of life and up the mountain this way and down the mountain that way, and we're walking through all of the things that are part of living in this human flesh, God's Word says, I'm going to lead you into a valley just like a shepherd leads cattle into a valley. and it's a place of rest. The Spirit of the Lord will give them rest. So the goal is to get refreshed and renewed daily and acquainted with the Spirit and the heart of God. That way you have this this residual, like this rejuvenating rest going on in your soul all the time. It's just like making sure that your your body is hydrated because as you're hydrated it can flush out all the toxins and the things and this is a constant thing that's going on so we need that that constant rejuvenation going on in our life but then there's a period that that God leads us down into a valley of rest a lot of times valleys are synonymous with I'm going through a hard time but it the, a valley can also be a place where you're sheltered and you're shielded so you can get rest. Um, John 10 and 27 says, My sheep know my voice and they follow me. So following God is where we will 
be able to navigate around pitfalls and um, follow him into a period of rest. So, um, in kind of conclusion, I, I guess, I want to share, it's going to be a long conclusion, um, but I want to share some scriptures that I think are, you can call them swords. They are weapons. The Bible um, is its a sword. They, when we put on the whole armor of God, the word of God is the sword. Um, and in times that you have struggles with rest, I have, one, let's see, one, two, three. Psalms, Psalms, four. Four scriptures, passages that I want to share with you, but I want you to write down where they're located. Don't don't worry so much right now about what they say because you're going to do this. This is going to be your activity tailor-made to you. So if you, this is a jumping off point. So Psalms 4. So go write it down, Psalms 4. Don't worry about looking it up right now, but in your personal study time, Go look up Psalms 4. I would suggest, I always read everything in the King James first, simply because that's kind of my default. I like the way it reads when I'm reading it, but I don't talk in King James, and no one I know talks in King James. So I would say go to Bible Hub or Bible Gateway and look up Psalms 4 and drop down through the translations and find one that is easily read because you're going to be reading it out loud when you have your prayer time with God. So go to Psalms 4, find that translation that you like, get your notebook out, your prayer book, and write the scripture down. But as you write it, um, personalize it, just like you're the one praying it. So, and I'm going to just read through it and just kind of give you some ideas. Um, it's, I don't know what translation this is. It says, Oh God, you have declared me perfect in your eyes. You have always cared for me in my dress, uh, distress. Now hear me as I call again. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. So if you're going to put this into a personalized prayer and you're going to be praying the word of God, which is the truth, which is powerful, which is alive, um, it is going to transform you from the inside out. I promise you this is fail proof God does not lie so you would say um, God you your word says that you see me as perfect and this perfect doesn't mean that you're without flaw because we can't see ourselves without seeing our flaws but but God looks at us as the finished product so here we are we're um, clay we are willingly putting ourselves on the potter's wheel. The potter has his hand on us. We're, you know, lumpy and he's putting pressure on us. And he, yes, we're a lump of clay, but he sees this perfect and complete perfection, meaning completed, finished vessel. So it says, God, you have declared me complete, lacking nothing in your eyes. You have always cared for me when I had trouble. Now hear me as I pray today. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. And then um, the next line, verse 2, is God talking. And then the third verse is something. It says, mark this well. So meaning make note. Lord, I thank you that you have set me apart. And that you're going to listen to me and answer when I call and I'm so thankful for that and then verse 4 says stand before the Lord in awe and do not sin against him lie quietly on your bed in silent meditation Lord I stand before you with utmost respect and reverence I am so thankful that I can come before you today um, Lord I am going to do my best through your power to not sin against you and then it says lie quietly on your bed in silent meditation so this might be a p moment where you just pause and you just literally lay there in silence. Um, the next verse is, put your trust in the Lord and offer him pleasing sacrifices. Lord, I trust you and I offer myself today a living sacrifice 
I want to be pleasing to you, Lord. Make whatever changes that you want to make in my life that I will be pleasing to you. And then you just go through this scripture line by line and you write it for you. So that is one that you can pray when you're having a little bit of a struggle of actually submitting and giving up and resting in Him. So, Psalms 4. We're all familiar with Psalms 23. So if you're um, having a little bit of a struggle with God leading you, then Psalms 23. Personalize it for you. Lord, you're my shepherd. Everything that you do is to feed, guide, and protect me. I will not have a single need because you're going to anticipate those needs before I even speak. Thank you for putting me in a place where I can be fed and I can lie down and I can rest. Thank you for providing still waters where I can be nourished. Um, thank you for refreshing and restoring my soul and bringing life to my soul. Thank you, Lord, for leading and guiding me through your word and, and through your, your voice. And the more I know you, the, the more clear the path becomes. Lord, even though right now I'm walking in this dark place, um, I'm not going to fear because you're with me. And then just go on through this whole scripture um, and personalize it for you. Um, you have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. Thank you, God, for for your oil, the oil of your spirit. The oil in scripture is always represented of the spirit of God. Lord, let your anointing, the approval of God, the covering of God, um, let your anointing be refreshed in me today. I need new oil. If you don't renew your oil, it gets rancid. Those of you that cook, you know. So we need new oil every day. And God, it says, my cup overflows. Lord, while my cup is overflowing and I'm living in the overflow, Lord, whatever you're you're putting into my life, Lord, let it flow out and overflow and help someone else. What is the point of being filled to overflowing if it just if it does not benefit someone else? Um, and then verse six, Lord, I thank you that your goodness and your mercy follow me all the days of my life. Um, and Lord, I just want to dwell in your house, whatever it takes, in your house and in your presence, at your feet. That's where I want to be, Lord. Keep me in your house and at your feet, Lord. And then um, this, I did a word study or a, read a commentary on the goodness and mercy following me. Um, and that follow, it sounds kind of passive, like, you know, a, a little duck toddling along behind its mother. I'm following you. But the follow in that scripture is as going after something that has been stolen from you during a conflict. So think of like an invasion and someone comes in and they take something that's precious that belongs to you and you recover and you're like, saddle up boys, we're going to get our such and such. That's the action behind that word follow. It is that goodness and mercy is literally hunting you down. And that's so comforting, especially when you're praying it for someone you love that has turned their back on God. And instead of going, you know, God, do whatever it takes, you know, this negativity, say, God, let your goodness and mercy just hunt them down. Like, what is more beautiful than the love of God out hunting down someone that you care about so much? Um, so, and to, to give a little um, perspective, the rod and the staff sound like they're for reproof and correction, and they are, and they can be, but that is not all that they are. It says the rod and the staff are tools used by the shepherd to prote protect, guide, and keep track of the flock. The staff was used to also support the shepherd as he's like you know, walking over this rocky terrain because sheep didn't just sit out in a, like a flat pasture like what we have our mind of. This is very rocky and treacherous terrain. So the staff gave the shepherd some stability. And so as we are walking along and we're traversing, we have that 
staff to lean on and it was also a place where he could lay on and lean on and rest and catch his breath as he's you know putting his foot one place and the other so the word of God is that for us we can rest in it we can rest in our relationship with God the Bible says that the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path so when you are in a situation where you don't know where am I gonna put my foot next get in the word and it's gonna shine a light on put your foot here oh no don't step there the rod and the staff comfort me so the staff was used to prod the sheep along like hey you know get moving but it was um, also used the the hook in would be to retrieve a, a sheep if it got stuck in a, a thicket or fell off of a little uh, precipice or something like that it, they could lift them up or pull them back into line with the staff so it is it is for correction as well as for comfort and the rod it was a weapon of defense against predators the shepherd had to be a one-man fighting machine sometimes you know he could throw the rod like a like a javelin he could use it in close combat and it was a deadly weapon in the hands of the shepherd the same hands that nurtured the sheep that anointed their heads with oil was the same hand that would hold that rod and defend them from predators and it was also a method of counting sheep so the very rod of defense that weapon that that you know deadly weapon that could you know eliminate that rod of correction what the shepherd would do is the sheep would pass under as they were going through say a narrow place he would hold or going into the, the enclosure for the night he would hold that staff across the rod across and the sheep would pass under and he would count them 15 20 30 99 where's 100 where's Christy I've got to secure these I've got to go find her because she's lost and something might get her and she's not going to get the rest and the nourishment that she needs I am so thankful for the rod of correction that has been in my life because if it had not been for the rod of correction the shepherd would not have known that I was missing and I want to be known of God I want him to come looking for me and I know you do too so don't I know correction, a period of correction and recalibration can be painful, but be thankful for it because that means that, that God knows you're missing and He's going to come looking for you. So the correction and guidance of God is essential to our being at rest. That it is, it is so important. So the next scripture that I would like to showcase would be Psalms 131, and that is being still before God. So the Psalms 131 says, Lord, my heart is not proud, nor my eyes haughty, nor do I involve myself in great matters or in things too difficult for me. So putting that in my words, Lord, I'm coming before you humble today. My eyes are not haughty. I'm not thinking like, does so-and-so think I'm good at this? Or does so-and-so approve of this? I'm, I'm not looking for accolades. I don't have an elevated opinion of myself. I'm not even worried about some of these weighty things that are going on in the world. And I have no grandiose plans. This is my plan. Verse 2. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child resting with his mother. My soul is like a weaned child within me. And then in, this is from the Amplified Bible. I really like the Amplified. It says, composed and freed from discontent. Another translation says, I have calmed and quieted my soul like a child that's just finished nursing. And, and any of you that have nursed or fed a baby, especially a hungry one, you know that they're, they are not the picture of contentment. They are quite the opposite. So a struggling, screaming, unhappy, writhing child, then they're fed, and then they just kind of take this breath, and then it's just like 
all the tension goes out of them and they just sag against you and the next thing you know they're snoring and they're just out and they're not a care in the world that's how we come to God be still before him God I'm laying everything aside I don't have any plans I don't have any expectations I just want to sit in your lap and I want to be fed and then I want to lay my head against your chest and hear your heartbeat that's how we come to God and still ourselves so make that your prayer give him your worries and your fears so Psalms 127 1 and 2 and we talked about this in the other session unless the Lord builds the house they that build they that labor in vain who build it so turn this into your prayer God I want you to build my house I don't want to be struggling and building on something over here in vain when that's not your plan for me Lord guard my city guard my my mind guard my heart Guard my eyes, guard my tongue, guard me. Put your angels about me, guard my family, my children, my home. You know, give God freedom to be the watchman over all that concerns you because he does all things well. Um, Lord, help me to not consume anxiety and stress. Lord, help me to make my diet, that daily bread, be things that you want to plant in my heart. Um, it says to eat the bread of anxious labors for he gives blessings to his beloved even in his sleep So Lord if I hide your word in my heart while I'm sleeping It's gonna take root and it's gonna start growing and it's gonna start producing fruit blessings in my sleep and um, it says uh, You know in in your sleep so that could be during a time when when things are um, Like not just going very well like things are just kind of just kind of at a standstill like God can bring things to life and then um, Psalm 16 1 through 2 and then also 7 through 11 in Psalm 16 1 and 2 Psalm 16 7 and 11 trust him in all things and it verse 1 and 2 says keep and protect me O God for in you I've placed my trust and found my refuge turn that into your prayer God I'm asking you to keep and protect me I trust you you are where I have found my refuge in um, the message it says oh God I have run for dear life to you so that visual of you know a baby falls down and skins his knee what does he do first thing he does is he stands up and he looks for mom or dad and then he's like hightailing it as fast as he can to refuge Lord I've run for dear life to you and I say be my Lord without you nothing makes sense um, and then verse 7 through 11 I will bless the Lord who has counseled me indeed my heart instructs me in the night I have set the Lord continually for me because he is at my right hand I will not be shaken therefore my heart is glad in my glory my innermost self rejoices my body too will dwell in safety for you will not abandon me you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy in your right hand there are pleasures forevermore customize this piece for yourself thank you Lord for the counsel that you've given me Lord I've hidden your word in my heart and at night and this doesn't mean day versus night I guess it could but to me it means when there's darkness and I can't see and I don't know what's out there the word that I've hidden in my heart counsels me and it gives me hope and it gives me direction and it gives me peace. I've set the Lord continually before me. He's at my right hand. I'm not going to be shaken. Um, it says, therefore, my heart is glad. Lord, my, my inner self rejoices in you and you're going to bring health to my, my body as well in this safe place. And then, um, you're in, Lord, in your presence there's fullness of joy and I'm so thankful that even whenever happiness might not be on the table joy is on the table fullness of joy is mine and your and in your right hand there are pleasures forevermore so that same right hand that is wielding the rod that is going to protect you is also the same right hand that we talked about a few weeks ago about removing the yoke from your jaw so that you could be fed that same right hand is the one that's gonna be handing out these pleasurable things these wonderful blessings to you forevermore so this is my suggestion to personalize these scriptures for yourself and if you have questions on what they are um, let me know in the comments and I'll comment back and make a list of them 
um, write these psalms as personalized prayers for you. I'm going to be doing the same thing. That's going to be my homework between now and next week. Ask God to teach you through His Word and His Spirit. He will quicken and guide you on what, who, and when you need to edit out rest robbers. So as you go about your week this week and next week, think about, is this a rest robber? Is this robbing my rest? Whether it's your mental rest, your emotional rest, your physical rest, your spiritual rest, is it a rest robber? God will show you where you should recalibrate and where the original paths are. I hope, I hope, I hope this has been an encouragement to you. I hope that it's lifted your spirits. I hope that you feel equipped and that you feel like you've got an arsenal to go to war with. And um, I just will be in prayer this week as I put some of these things into better use for myself. I would love to hear um, in comments below if you have implemented these things and what the results are. Um, I know God is true and, and His Word is um, infallible and that He will not um, turn His back on us when we call out for help. So be encouraged. And if this has been an encouragement to you, please in turn encourage someone else. And I love you and I'm praying for you and I will see you next week.